Welcome back, and we're at the end of week five, and throughout this week you've been looking at high sensitivity GPS and it's and assisted GPS, and those two things together are what has enabled GPS to go into all of our smartphones. And GPS is now literally in well over a billion phones, and it's in practically every smartphone that's made. And as a result of that, there's been a, a great prolifer proliferation of apps for the phones, as I'm sure, I'm sure you've noticed. And so it seemed like a good uh, little module to do at the end of this week that we'll, let's look at the variety of apps that are available in, in your smartphones. And so looking through this, um, I decided that all of the different apps out there, and there are thousands of them, they can all be categorized like this. They, they are either of the category of where am I now and what's around me, or where have I been, or where are other people or things, or where have they been. And then there's some intersections of these different categories, and, and, the, and the intersections is where things really get interesting. So, so let's start at the beginning and, and go through some apps. I, what I've done is picked out roughly 50 different apps that, that give an indication of the variety of apps and, and a sample of the different kind of things that you'll see. And I hope that some of these will be new to every one of you, or even though most of them should be familiar. So in the blue, we have apps that fit around the idea of where am I and what's around me. And the, and the first and most important killer app for GPS was getting directions. And so we all use that, to using maps on your smartphone and getting turn-by-turn -turn directions. And that is by far the most important use of GPS, the most widely used application of GPS in your smartphone. Uh, and then the thing to notice here is that I've uh, put quotes around some of these. And where there's a quote, it means that's the literal name of a particular app. So Zillow, for example, is an application that's uh, available in the US where wherever you are, you can bring up Zillow and it'll show you the houses around you and what the prices of those houses are based on what the most recent sale price was of whichever house sold recently. And they adjust all the most recently known prices for an area, so that's a really interesting economic blend of GPS and uh, publicly available information in the US. Uh, I'm not going to go through each one of these in turn. I'm just going to highlight some that uh, bring out some particular uh, aspects of GPS. And one interesting one is an app called Remember the Milk, appropriately named, because what this is is an app that makes use of geofencing. And geofencing is a, a kind of program that makes use of GPS that's checking your position every now and again. So inside your phone, your GPS will come on every few seconds or maybe every minute. And then you can put a fence around an area. And as you enter that virtual fence, it will send you some reminders. So remember, the Milk app is you can tell it, remind me to buy A, B, C, and D when I get near this particular shop or the supermarket. And as you drive by there, it's supposed to remind you to buy whatever it was you're supposed to buy. Uh, then um, another interesting app that, that for people involved in GPS is very nice to use, something called SkyMap. And there's, there are other similar ones. But if you look up SkyMap, you should find the other similar ones too. It is an application that makes use of all the sensors in your smartphone as well as the GPS. So it knows where you are, and when you lift it up, it knows the angle of the phone, and it'll show you a rendering on the screen of what you can see in the sky at that time. So if the if a particular constellation of stars is vi visible in a certain part of the sky, as you lift up your phone, it'll show you that constellation and tell you what it is. It's a very nice app to play with. And a similar one for GPS practitioners is something called Satellite AR that does the same thing, but it overlays on the image on your screen, the image on your screen will be what your camera sees, so it'll be what you're looking at, and it'll do uh, enhanced reality by overlaying on that the actual locations of the GPS satellites, or actually the GNSS satellites, GPS, GLONASS, Beidou, et cetera. So, you, so that's, it's quite fun for GPS practitioners like ourselves to, to make use of that if you're, and, and it's more than just fun if you're doing some tests of GPS and you, you're getting a large amount of multipath, like, uh, you 
see in, in the lab where you have to experiment with multipath, you can play with this app and you can look and see, oh, this particular satellite is blocked by this building and the, this overlay of the image on your smartphone can, can tell you that. So there's a, a selection of apps that have to do with what's around me and what about other people? Well, there's things and other things. There's apps to, uh, for public transport uh, available all over the world. This is a particularly interesting one. Uh, there, there are scientists that put uh, tracking tags on various large animals, including sharks. And every time the shark comes to the surface, uh, the, the tag with the radio on it can send a, a message uh, to a satellite, and that gets referred back. And you can actually get an app called Shark Tracker that literally uh, will show you the location of several sharks around the world. So if you're a bit worried about sharks, maybe you want to take this app with you to the beach and you can tell if any of them are nearby. And then uh, some apps that are not widespread yet but are being discussed and use uh, interesting use of crowdsourcing. Uh, there are some apps that are being developed for earthquake monitoring and the idea is if a phone is just sitting on a desk and it starts to shake, uh, it would send a message off to a server and if many phones in that area all did that at the same time, then you could tell that, that there was an earthquake and you could actually measure it because you have an accelerometer in the phone that could measure the amount of shaking. So that's, that's something that's being developed, uh, as you might expect, being developed in Japan and also in California, in two places where people care very much about earthquakes. And in a similar type of thing, uh, there's a big concern about jamming, deliberate and unintended jamming of GPS by some signals on our frequency of 1575 megahertz. And so similarly, you could use crowdsourcing, or you may well be using crowdsourcing in your phone sometime in the future uh, to detect any jamming. If a lot of phones in an area report jamming, then uh, somewhere in the cloud, somebody can tell that the center of those, that crowd is where the jammer is located. So there's some applications of where are people or things. And we've seen where am I. When the two come together is where you get some really interesting ones. And one of uh, Facebook uh, is one that everybody knows. And uh, where GPS comes into Facebook is uh, where are my friends. You can post your location. You can see uh, which of your friends have posted their location and if they're nearby you. And uh, Facebook actually has quite a lot of features to help you uh, find your friends, literally find your friends, not just virtually, but literally find them if they're in the vicinity of you. Another one that's made a uh, a lot of news lately is Uber. Uh, Uber is a, an app that enables private citizens who are not in taxis but in their own cars to turn their car into a taxi by picking up people who are looking for a ride somewhere. And you've probably seen in the news recently that this has caused strikes of taxi drivers throughout the world from the US to France to Germany. And it's uh, big news right now. And it all is enabled by the GPS apps in the smartphones. And then, of course, you've probably seen apps like Find My Phone. And then something similar to Facebook, there's an app called Singles Around Me, where if you log into that app, you can find other people who have logged into that app and want to be found. And you can probably meet up with some other GPS geek just like you. And then maybe the funniest and most interesting of all these social apps is something called Split, which advertises itself as an anti-social app. And the way it works is that it crawls around these other apps and looks in apps like Facebook and sees all the names of people who've posted their location on those apps. And you can register with Split and tell it people that you want to avoid. And it will, if they have posted their location on some other app, Split will find out and warn you if they're in your vicinity so you can keep out their way. So that's uh, an anti-social app. Um, so, Apps that fall in the category of where have people been, Universal Orlando is the uh, Universal Studios theme park in Orlando, Florida. That they have an app for cell phones uh, to help deal with the queues. So if everyone's using this, this app, you can see how long the, the queue time is at each of the different rides, which is kind of interesting. But by far the most important use of where are other people and where have they been is in generating traffic maps, which uh, are becoming more and more widely used through the world and really actually help all of us and help the environment by helping us see where there's traffic and avoiding it and uh, using less fuel. So those, those are the categories of 
where have other people been, where have I been, falls in uh, things where you want to record some information. So Fishing Points is an app where if you go fishing, you can record the places where you had some good luck and get back. Glimpse is an app where you can send your location plus the history of your location, but just for a certain amount of time, hence the name Glimpse, so that you, so if you wanted to, if you're hiking a mountain and you want to share your location with people for a few hours, you can do that and then the Glimpse will expire or if you're uh, running a race or whatever, uh, Glimpse does that. Then there, there are apps for GPS art where people uh, might run or cycle or in one case sail a particular pattern and, and by using the tracks generated from the GPS actually create art on the surface of the earth which is quite an interesting use of GPS and there's one another maybe in this bottom left ellipse we have all the most weird and interesting ones. Uh, there's an app where you can record audio as you drive around or walk around and it also records so it records the audio and records your location and you can play it back later so you can see your track moving on the map and listen to the audio that occurred at that stage. I'm not sure why, but there's an app for it. Then uh, this is a more uh, mundane, uh, uh, practical app. You can use a GPS as a tape measure or an area measurement device. And so people use this uh, who are laying out fields and so on. Just with a, your cell phone, you can walk from somewhere to somewhere else and use the GPS as a, as a large scale tape measure. Or uh, the app called Planimeter, it, you can walk around an area and it'll calculate the area of uh, the, the place you walked or, or drove around. And then where uh, apps for remembering your position come together with where other people have been, uh, two interesting ones Something called RunKeeper is one of the preeminent running apps that people use uh, in their phones. And Map My Ride is a similar thing for cyclists. But why they're interesting is that they combine your track, so you can see later where you've run or ridden, but you can, in real time, combine that with where other people have ridden. You can actually compete against somebody virtually on a particular run. So first of all, you can see an area where maybe it's nice to run or ride. But then while you're there, you can choose to virtually compete against somebody else who rode that or ran that at a certain pace and the GPS will tell you how you're doing compared to them. And uh, one thing I, I must mention before we move on is another interesting and uh, not uh, obvious one, but there are several apps with the name Fake GPS. And where these have come from is the desire for people who might be tracked by someone else to not be tracked by someone else. And so these are apps that actually don't use the GPS at all, but generate a GPS position and insert it into the other apps to make them think you were somewhere you were not. So that gives us examples of apps in each of the different areas, but the most interesting area of all and by far the most significant are these new apps such as Google Now and Waze that bring together all of these different things. And Google Now is an application that knows that can know almost everything about you. It knows where the traffic is, knows where you work. If you give it all this information, it can know that. And I showed you an example of this a while ago uh, where I showed you uh, the screen of my phone and, and it had, it reminded me that it was time to leave work to get to here to Stanford to uh, make the video. And so it knew my calendar, it knew where it knows where I work, it knew, it knew the traffic, knew how long it would take to get there. So it's combining all of these different components of location to be a virtual assistant for you if you want it. If you don't want it, you don't enable these things and it doesn't work. Waze is something that's uh, a company that was bought by Google and that combines where have other people been, where, where are they now and where am I now? And the, uh, it's a traffic app, so it, it will show you traffic, but the, one of the reasons it's, it's used by so many people is that people get to tag where they see uh, police on the roads. And so you see a little icon where there are uh, traffic cops on the roads, and so people use it to try and avoid or try and get some forewarning of where there are traffic cops. So that's, uh, that's ways.